Hello everyone. Recently something's caught my attention that's been playing on my mind, so I'd like to talk about it to you in the hopes of getting everything out there and clarifying some things that might otherwise get taken at face value. The organisation Britain First has recently begun posting several videos up on their website, the purpose and framing of which I take something of an issue with, and that's what I'll be discussing today. For those of you not in the know, Britain First classifies themselves as a patriotic, pro-Britain Christian organisation that seeks to defend the UK from the threat of Islam. Their leader, Paul Golding, has recently posted a series of videos going to various locations where refugees are being held and trying to find out more information. We'll be examining one such video today, titled Britain First Exposes Illegal Immigrant Hotel in Wolverhampton. Now, I think that language is important. Certain words have certain meanings, and depending on how we use certain phrases, our statements can mean different things. Whoever put this video together obviously feels the same way as I do, which is why they've decided to frame things in this way. Claiming that Mr. Golding here is exposing anything implies some level of secrecy to the whole thing, as if the government is trying to sneak these people into the country from under your noses. But if you look at the articles they cite not five seconds later, you would see that this is public knowledge. There's nothing being hidden here, it's just described as such to imply some malicious intent where there is none. The term illegal immigrant is also a rather transparent attempt to frame these people in a certain way. This terminology implies that they're breaking migration laws by coming to England, which isn't actually the case. These people staying in the hotels are asylum seekers, which is a human right, not a crime. It's not illegal to flee persecution in a life-threatening situation. Calling them illegal immigrants just shames them for a situation they don't really have any control over and only serves to prime the viewer into already accepting that these people have some form of malicious intent. This framing continues in the next part of the video where they quickly flash two newspaper headlines that cover the situation. The first reads, Asylum seekers in the black country, Wolverhampton Council fury at dumping of refugees in city hotels. And the second, Where is the humanity? Asylum seekers dumped in Wolverhampton Hotel. Now, at a first glance, and with little thought to these headlines, it seems pretty obvious that these articles are in sympathy with the people that work at the hotel and the surrounding town, right? This damn government has dumped these Afghans on their doorstep and now the poor hotel staff and surrounding townsfolk have to put up with their nonsense. But if you pay closer attention, there's a few things that get the old alarm bells ringing. Take a look at this first article again and see if you can notice what's wrong with it. If you notice that it was published in 2015, congratulations, you have a keen eye. As of me creating this response, that's damn near six years ago. That's an enormous amount of time to be digging up articles for a problem that only seems to have surfaced a few days ago. Now, if I had to come up with a reason for this little discrepancy, I would say it's probably to give the illusion of frequency, or that more people are bothered by the current situation than there actually are. This is a smart little trick, and it actually slipped my attention when I first watched the video. This is because the first article is only shown for 5 seconds, giving you just enough time to read the title and the description before it shuffles over to the next one, as though it's some kind of card trick you'd see at the pub. But let's say I'm looking too deep into it. After all, there's another article from the 13th of September this year, so obviously that one's much more trustworthy, right? Well, if you look carefully again, there's something that you should be able to see in this article as well. I'll give you a few seconds to look for it, because it isn't very obvious in the video. Do you give up? I knew you would, because the thing you're supposed to be looking for is the actual contents of the article, rather than the inflammatory title that's designed to get views from curious passers-by. See, what the editor for this video has done, rather successfully, is string together unrelated footage in an attempt to tell a story and frame your opinion before the video has even begun. The misleading title combined with these two headlines gives the impression that there's more frequent dissatisfaction with these asylum seekers than there actually is. Now I did something I'd be willing to wager nobody who took this video seriously did, and I actually went looking for these articles just to be sure that they said what the titles and the rest of the video imply, and honestly I was pretty excited when I found them. Britain first implies that these articles are complaining about these refugees for some reason, as if there's some kind of hassle or burden, hence the implication of a lack of humanity. But in reality, these articles are discussing the improper facilities at hand to treat the refugees accordingly. It's not a lack of humanity to the council or the workers or even the surrounding townsfolk, but to the refugees themselves. I'll leave a link to the articles below so you can see it for yourself. Britain First is trying to slip one past you, so to speak, which is ironic when you consider that's their entire problem with these refugees, you know, them trying to slip one past you without you realising. 
What they've done here is called priming, where they frame things in a certain way to set up your expectations to be fulfilled by a predetermined conclusion. The description of the video also does this. The Britannia Hotel in Wolverhampton has been in the local news recently because the government has dumped hundreds of illegal immigrants there against the wishes of the local council. When Britain first arrived at the hotel, there were several Afghan migrants loitering around outside. Paul Golding then had to put a member of staff and a local passerby firmly in their place about the scrounging migrants. So apparently there's several migrants loitering outside. So let's take a look and see this multitude of scary foreigners and examine what they're up to. Excuse me, are you staying at the hotel? Ah yes, these several men loitering around. I know there's more than one, and so it technically is several, but why not just say the two of them, or the pair, or the dynamic duo, or whatever you fancy? Well, again, this is because they want to set your expectations through the language they use. Britain first wants to spread the idea that we're slowly being invaded by unmanageable numbers of immigrants, and so the language has to be just barely general enough to convey this idea without giving the game away. Also, how are these two men loitering? If they're staying at the hotel, they have a legal right to be there, don't they? Would you prefer if they went out on the street, maybe down to the local to play a few games of pool with you and the rest of your mates? They're using vague, scary legal language to apply malicious intent to a couple of blokes who honestly look like they're just out for some fresh air and a chat. Mr. Golding then interrogates these two men, who I must add have good enough English to communicate their discomfort with being filmed by this random stranger, and finds out they're from Afghanistan. That's the only information he gets before they walk inside and shut him out, which seems to surprise Mr. Golding for some reason. And they've closed the door on me. Now you can see. The Britannia Hotel in Wolverhampton is housing lots of Afghan migrants. Now this caught me a bit off guard when I first watched the video because, well no, I don't see that. I see an empty lobby and mostly reflections from the windows. I don't see several migrants. Ah, but that's the point, you see. Mr. Golding wants you to think and is already under the assumption that this hotel is swarming with these immigrants, and so he can just say it, and if you think the same thing then you'll believe it, despite having the opposite be demonstrated right before your eyes. This is what bothers me most about Britain first, they'll lie straight to your face and your pre-existing beliefs will confirm it, in spite of there being literal proof that they're just feeding you lies. Also, let's go back to a little bit earlier when I mentioned the intentional use of the word loitering to describe these two men standing by the front door having a chat. Loitering is often used to refer to hanging around with the intent to do crime, and typically people are charged with it when criminal intent isn't demonstrable but you still want to charge them. This is handy for Britain first because it allows them to accuse these two men of committing the heinous crime of talking outside their current residence. Honestly, if you want to accuse anyone of criminal intent, I'd say the strange looking man trying to film strangers through windows on private property is much more grounds for criminal intent than two men just standing there. Ah, but I forget. Mr. Golding is British, and these two men are scary foreigners, so obviously their intent is malicious. How could I forget? Mr. Golding is then confronted by somebody who works at the hotel, and they get into a bit of an argument over the whole thing. This is where he makes the argument you'll see a lot from Britain first, that there are numerous homeless veterans that the housing could go towards instead. There's a lot of homeless people here in Wolverhampton, I'm pretty sure they'd like to stay in this hotel. And this is a fair argument, you know, we should definitely be taking care of our own before straining those resources to help others, you know, put on your own oxygen mask before assisting others and all that. And that's exactly what we're doing. See, what Britain First has continually been shown to ignore is that there are already local efforts in place to help the native homeless population. They've been criticised in the past for weaponising homeless veterans to take shelter away from refugees, claiming that these homeless veterans deserve it more. And Wolverhampton agrees. Which is why according to the wolverhampton.gov.uk website, they've partnered with the local group Wolverhampton Homes and Housing Operations to give priority to homeless veterans or bereaved spouses of deceased armed forces members. 
Britain First either doesn't know this or is deliberately ignoring it in order to maintain their trend of recruiting veterans to their cause by exploiting their sense of patriotism that made them enlist in the first place, by making these refugees out as some form of internal threat to the entirety of Britain. Okay. Mr. Golding then tries to enter the hotel, but is stopped by the worker, and this seems to upset Mr. Golding for some reason, as though he isn't a visibly aggravated stranger who's come to a shelter to pick a fight or prove something to his mates. We then get fed another common line by Mr. Golding, who asks why they simply don't stay in France or other neighbouring countries. Now, the answer to this one is pretty simple, and it's that the UK is much more friendly when it comes to building a life than places like France, in no small part because of our language. You know English is spoken all over the world, which means it's much easier for these people to come here and integrate with people that they can already talk to. English is a much easier language to learn than French, and much more widespread, and this is only one reason why we see so many refugees from Calais. Would you rather they live somewhere they couldn't communicate with their surrounding communities, or would that make them too isolationist in your books? France is also described by refugees as a minefield of bureaucracy, with so many measures in place that make it impossible to start a new life. If they want to work and contribute to our country, then I say let them. It's not harming anyone to have more workers, unless you think that a scary migrant is stealing your job by coming over to work, in which case they can always not take your job and rely on benefits instead. Or would that make them these scroungers that Golding accused them of being? Come to think of it, is there anything these refugees can do that would satisfy Britain first, or would they rather have them stay homeless in more hostile countries, or better yet just stay in Afghanistan and eventually die to the Taliban? Out of sight, out of mind, am I right? It's at this point in the video that a random bystander comes to intervene, and I have to say, respect to this man for standing up to the random aggravated stranger who's clearly out to prove something. Golding gets upset by this and accuses the worker of starting it as though he's a five-year-old on a playground. Yeah. What do you mean, what am I doing to him? Why are you recording me? Yeah, yeah, well, has he, has he done anything Because wrong? he came out mouthing off. Yeah. I'd hardly call him respectfully asking you not to film on private property mouthing off, nor him being firm when you try to trespass. In fact, I respect him even more by putting himself in between you and the very obvious young child in the doorway. Golding accuses the bystander of being nosy and getting involved where he doesn't belong. Hey, I heard you say... Yeah, uh, what's he got to do with you, Jobsworth? Well, I'm, not, I'm not the Jobsworth. Captain Citizen, what are you going to do? Now, I didn't know what a Jobsworth was when I first saw this. I think it's a pretty dated reference for a younger person like myself. So I looked it up and apparently it describes someone who upholds petty rules in the face of common sense or humanity. In addition to being incredibly childish, it also demonstrates a huge lack of self-awareness on Mr. Golding's behalf. Would you not describe the person sticking his nose into a refugee shelter looking to make problems a captain citizen? Or would you not say that the person who would let hundreds of people freeze out in the streets or stay in a war-torn country rather than occupy a few hotels a petty rule-enforcing inhumane jobs worth? He also follows up by asking us who made us world police. Yeah, so what are we, the policeman of the world, the social worker of no. the world? Now, I don't know if Mr. Golding is familiar at all with the last 20 years of history or politics, but I'd say it's a fair wager to say that, well, we did when we decided to invade Afghanistan alongside the United States in 2001. Now, call me a cucked, bleeding heart liberal, and to be honest, I'd be surprised if you hadn't already, but if we're going to involve ourselves in an international conflict, then we should be willing to deal with the consequences of that decision, including refugees who are fleeing the monster that's spreading as a result of our actions. But even if that wasn't the case, why should we condemn these people to die? What sins have these men committed that's so brutal that they deserve to be left behind and suffer a painful death? You know, all they've done is be born in the wrong place at the wrong time, and to try and get out of a bad situation, and you can slap any fancy labels on it that you want, but at the end of the day, that's it. If you want to blame anyone, blame the government for how they handled it, but not the people suffering, I'd hope you're better than that. Before the bystander can even respond, the video ends abruptly. Ever faithful in your argument, eh? So faithful you have to silence your opposition before they can prove you wrong. Hmm. So that's how Britain first operates. They rely so heavily on your pre-existing beliefs about <coughs> immigrants that with a little bit of priming and spinning otherwise neutral stories via contextual cues, they're able to paint a much darker picture of what's happening. They repeat the same few talking points that are designed to get you upset and bypass the part of your brain that responds to things rationally. You know, these migrants are coming here, draining our resources when we need them for ourselves. 
not realizing that we already have programs in place to help our own. These guys have something that we don't and that's not fair, ignoring the fact that they have it because they're fleeing a war-torn country and it isn't permanent. You know, if you watch the video by itself without all the added information, it's just some bloke going up and harassing strangers like you'd see in one of those sovereign citizen videos before they get arrested for disturbing the peace or something. But this video is so bogged down in its efforts to get your emotions fired up before it even starts that you go in wanting to be angry, and that's a pretty difficult thing to catch and overcome. And honestly, it's pretty successful at what it does, you know, this video has over 700 shares across social media, so it seems to have gotten these people outraged enough for them to be angry about it. When I watched this video, I couldn't help but wonder what the people that believed it think. You know, I wrote a master's thesis on propaganda and how it targets your internal biases, so I went into this video knowing what to look out for, uh, but other people aren't so lucky. This user asks, I don't understand why people think we should stand for this filthy culture that is allowed to invade this country and expect the working taxpayer to pay for it. And this comment surprised me at first because of how brazenly hateful it is towards these people, you know. Here they are in a horrible situation they'd probably rather not be in. You know, I don't know anyone who'd want to abandon their entire lives and everything they've ever known. You know, they've been dumped in some arbitrary location without the proper care they need. You can't help but feel a little bit sorry for them at the very least, but here comes this person calling them filthy. You know, they're just standing around having a chat, but because of how you picture them, you again ignore what's in front of you, and that's pretty sad. There's also the tax-paying citizen line in there again, uh, and this gets repeated a few times in the comments. We need to organize huge protest against this influx of illegals if we want to do something. Three quarters of the country might not know of these luxury hotels housing at taxpayers' expense. Now this is one of those lines I don't really understand because of the way it's typically used. See, it's not the words being said that matter here, but the implication of what's left unsaid. When these people say taxpayer money, what they really mean is my money, because they want you to feel as though the greedy government bastards are taking money from your pocket and giving it to the immigrants. But that's not really the case, is it? The amount that you're being taxed isn't increasing all of a sudden thanks to these refugees, it's just that more of the resource pulled from taxes is being allocated to them. I know the imagery of the hard-working British citizen being forced to fork over more of their hard-earned money to fund these lazy foreigners' lavish lifestyles is a very compelling one, and it definitely gets the outrage machine churning. But that's not what's happening. To be honest, I'd much rather my taxes go towards providing shelter to people that need it rather than funding another failure of a war that kills another 454 British troops, but I don't know, maybe Britain first begs to differ. Now, Going back to this comment, there's another interesting bit of language that caught my eye, and that's the term luxury hotels. This comes up quite a bit in the comments, and I don't know if this is something Mr. Golding has repeated enough to become the standard assumption, or if it's just the name Britannia that makes it sound fancy. Your guess is as good as mine. This user says, This is utterly disgraceful. Illegal immigrants have all been housed in luxury hotels, and government cancelled all British citizens' booking rooms for holiday to favour those migrants. It's time British people get angry and expose what this fake Tory slash Labour government do this country. Good that Paul put the brainwashed traitor snowflake to his place. This one here says, Well done. They shouldn't even be here, never mind being sent to plush hotels. Just read that another luxurious hotel in Lancashire is being used to house them. And finally, this will carry on. Give these scroungers nothing, no luxury hotels, no money, nothing when they come here, then let's see if they will come. Now I've never been to the Britannia Hotel in Wolverhampton, so I have no idea if it is luxury or not. What I would wager is that none of these commenters have been there either, and I can prove it. I'd like to draw your attention to the articles that I mentioned earlier, you know, the ones that Britain First themselves obviously trust enough to put in their anti-refugee video. While I was reading the articles to try and find out more about the situation, which I highly recommend doing by the way, it's a fun little game I like to play called Does This Article Mean What I Think It Means? Anyway, there's an interesting line in the article that I thought would be important, and it turns out that I was right. The person who provided a statement, the same one quoted in the title that Britain first cited, reveals that the line of hotels that the Britannia belongs to has consistently been rated as the worst chain in England. For eight years! That's since before the first article was even released in 2015. Now how did this discrepancy happen? If Mr. Golding saw this in the article that he must have read to put in his video, 
why does he and everyone else commenting claim that this is a luxury hotel? Well, there are two explanations and they're both pretty bleak. The first and most insidious explanation is that Mr. Golding did read the article but chose to ignore that little detail and pretend that this is a luxury hotel. You know, they have something we don't and that's not fair so let's get all up in arms about it. The second and dare I say more probable and also embarrassing explanation is that Mr. Golding only skimmed the title of the article and misinterpreted it through the lens of his internal biases before adding it into the video to get everyone else equally riled up about it. I'll leave it to you people watching at home to decide which one you think is more probable, but either way, it doesn't really help his case. So now that we've established that this is in fact not a luxury hotel chain and has been frequently regarded as filthy and neglected for almost a decade, we can safely say that all of these commenters have no idea what they're talking about and are simply falling for more us versus them rhetoric. You know, it's easy to pretend you're being excluded from something when you can just make it up. And this brings me to something Mr. Golding says earlier in the video. Homeless veterans, men okay, veterans, who've yeah. served in the British Armed Forces, fought for Queen and Country, now living on the streets. You know, this is something that makes me think that Mr. Golding didn't really read the article he uses to prove his point. Because if he did, he'd realise that he's advocating to have homeless veterans stay in a filthy and neglected building, which, to be honest, doesn't really make it seem like he cares about them all that much. You know, if he respects them so much, why would he want them in such awful conditions? Surely it makes more sense for these people to use the services available to them that can guarantee them a proper home, rather than staying in some dingy hotel backrooms and then maybe getting into social housing, which Mr. Golding refers to as brand new houses. Brand new houses soon. I don't know if it's just me, but that phrase conjures up images of some suburban neighbourhood with a garden and all that cushy niceness, not this. Or better yet, maybe Mr. Golden can take a page out of this commenter's book. Those that don't mind them coming here should be made to house them and care for their every need. That'll shut them up. What a great idea. You know, maybe you can use that brand new gym you just opened in London to house all of the homeless veterans you care about in the meantime. You know, it'd be a much better use of that building space than whatever this is. If anything, I'd say that these refugees have done everyone in Wolverhampton a service. The people who had their bookings cancelled to accommodate these refugees can go find some other nicer place that isn't consistently given one out of five stars and they'll have a much nicer holiday for it. Thank you very much, Afghan man. You've done the people of Wolverhampton a great service. But seriously, I think it's pretty obvious what's going on here. The video describes these people as scroungers, so they have to be represented as such at every possible opportunity, otherwise the illusion falls apart and you might be sympathetic towards these refugees. And we can't have that now, can we? And this is a trend that happens again with several other commenters, you know, trying to act as though these damn dirty foreigners are coming here and getting everything handed to them. And this next section is going to be truly baffling, but it's important to see the thought process of these people. So this commenter says, funny how they all have up to date phones, where the migrants got the iPhones 12. And last but definitely not least, hey Paul, as Andreas noticed, Ha ha, iPhone 12, they can afford it. We know it, then get free everything, then call friends and family over for more. Now once again, I have to ask which videos these people watched, because I went over the footage of these two men again, looking for any sight of an iPhone 12, and I couldn't really find any. I'll leave you guys a link to the video below, and if you can see anything, please let me know, because I'm absolutely stumped. Oh, wait a second. Oh, there it is. Aha, so these people are being given a free iPhone 12. Those lazy scrounges, how dare they? Hmm, <laughs> if only. For those of you who know how to watch a video with the sound on, you'll remember that this man holding the iPhone 12 is the person working at the hotel, not staying there. This is the only group of comments I find truly inexcusable. You know, I understand falling for propaganda that deliberately targets your emotions, but I'd at least expect you to watch the video and listen to it. Did they watch it on mute or skip through it? Your guess is as good as mine, to be honest. It's just baffling to me that they assume this man is an asylum seeker, or as they want to call them, illegal immigrant. And even more so that they think this one man owning an iPhone 12 means that there's some program that hands them out for free to everyone that comes in from Afghanistan. This is how deep the rabbit hole goes for some of these people. They see an image that has no relation to what they're actually angry about. And honestly, at this point, I wonder if they even know what they're angry about. 
and they'll connect these two dots that are light years apart and spread the word to other people that they can also make angry and the cycle continues. You know, don't let facts or logic get in the way of some good old feelings. You know, I'm sure a smarter person than myself can come up with some form of catchy slogan to express that sentiment, but I'm sure you get the idea. Going back to the assumption that this man is a foreigner, there's only one factor I can think of that contributes to this misconception. And I really, really don't want to have to spell it out for you, but I know I'm going to have to. This man is black. Please hold any and all questions until the end of the video. Now, if any Britain First supporters or any other such anti-woke ilk are watching, I'm sure I can read the reaction you just had. Why did you have to make it a race thing? This loony left can't see anything but skin color and so on and so forth. Well, the interesting thing about that is I'm not the one that made an arbitrary decision about this man based on his race. You know, I'm just the messenger here for what Britain First is saying. They're the ones that conflated this one man with every single refugee, and this sentiment is more honestly reflected by this comment. Perfect examples right there. The Somalian claiming to work for the hotel, then doesn't, then does. Then the white guy claiming we need to help these people without any line of thought to those of us born here whom already need help before illegals or immigrants. And that's what we're up against. Our own idiots without a brain cell amongst them. Hopefully those are the ones lining up for their vaccines. Now, conspiracy theory aside, this comment immediately caught my attention for how it describes this worker, Somali. Again, I highly encourage you to watch the video for yourself and see, but nowhere in this video is this man's ethnicity or nationality revealed. There are contextual clues like his typical British accent and his job in Britain, which leads me to believe that he's British. So where did that Somali line come from? If I had to wager a guess, I'd say it's just this commenter falling into the event horizon of their own bigotry towards these refugees and dragging this young man down alongside them. You know, all Afghan refugees are either scrounging migrants or terrorists because they look like the bad guys in the movies I've seen. This guy's defending these bad guys and he kind of vaguely looks like the Somali pirate from that one movie with Tom Hanks. So I'll just use an entire nationality as a pejorative because of the negative connotations it conjures up and hope that nobody notices I've just lumped him in with an entire group of people. Very smart move from this definite KKK member. Do you see what I did there? I hope whoever left this comment is watching. Hello. It doesn't feel very good to get lumped in with a group generally seen as having negative personality traits, does it? Maybe that's why Britain first hates getting lumped in with fascists and Nazis, who knows? Probably don't do that in the future, you know, it isn't very nice and it just makes you seem irrational. Also, has this person never heard of a job agency before? I haven't been to Wolverhampton, but I'm pretty sure the concept isn't foreign to them over there. Or maybe it is a foreign concept and that's why it angers Mr. Golding so much when he hears about it. Which oh, Good lord. Anyways, that's enough of that. I'm sure you get the picture. Britain First is an organization with a vested interest in telling you what to think, and in case you don't know what to think about that, it's bad. I highly recommend anyone who's been given a deeper look into how Britain First manipulates you to give me a like and subscribe. This is the first of hopefully several pieces delving into Britain First as an organization and the many controversies and questionable tactics they've employed over the years. In the meantime, make sure not to blindly accept everything you see. Britain First claims to be against fake news, but as we've just seen, they're no strangers to manipulation and deceit. It's just some food for thought. And I'd just like to round off by saying that for all the people that commented on this video, or for anyone on Britain First websites, or anyone that thinks I'm a traitor for making this video, consider this. In the Battle of Britain, when Britain stood alone against Germany, foreign troops made up 20% of the forces that helped defend our country from invasion. It was their bravery and sacrifice that contributed to us being where we are today. So when you see a British person standing up for what they believe in, between innocent people and those that wish to pick a fight or otherwise harm them, just remember, they're honouring the legacy of those RAF pilots who did the exact same thing in World War II, by ignoring race, creed and religion, and standing up for what's right. I'll end with a question. Where would we be today? if all of those international pilots thought the same as Mr. Golding and simply left us to die. Until next time.